Hello and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial. Today we're going to be making these really cool sci-fi hologram readout things. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete everything. So hit A to select all and X to delete. And I'm going to go Shift A Mesh Plane. We're just going to create a simple plane to do this nice and easy. Now let's come over to the Wrench tab and we're going to add a bunch of modifiers onto this and do some cool stuff with those modifiers. So first up I want to add in a subdivision surface. So I'll just click on the Add Modifier tab and click Search and then type Subdivision and just hit return there. You can also just click it and start typing and that'll automatically take you into the search. Um, and I'm gonna pull this one and I'm gonna I'm gonna go up to like, I don't know, I'll go up to five maybe, I think. So Subdivision Service is gonna create a lot of extra geometry for us. And um, I'm gonna switch this to simple so we keep the box shape. And uh, what I wanna do next is I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna add in a displacement modifier. There it is, so displacement, you can see it elevates. I'm going to click new to create a new texture for this displacement. And then this texture, we're going to go edit it. So I'm going to click on this little button, which will jump me all the way, all the way down to this texture tab. See, pop oh, there. And it's set at start by default to image or movie. You can bring in an image or movie to be the displacement texture, but I want to switch this to one of these. I'm going to go for clouds. That's fine. And I want to turn the scale up on this. So it's got a bit more uh, size to it. And I'm going to go back to the wrench. I'm going to right click shade smooth on this object. Um, and we'll start with this and we'll add some more complexity uh, afterwards. I might add another subdivision surface as well real quick, uh, just here at the end. And I'm gonna come down here and for boundaries, I'm gonna set keep corners. I'll just keep my corners sharp, uh, which is nice. So, all right, let's get a camera. I'm gonna go Shift A and we're gonna grab a camera and I will jump into the camera by hitting zero on my number keypad or you can click this icon to do it. And then I'm going to lock my camera to view. Um, that's right, we've got the new way of doing it, which is clicking the lock button. Love that. And let's just position this right in here, like so. And I'm gonna take this camera and I'm gonna go to the camera tab and I'm gonna go to camera, where is it? Viewport display, passport two, I'll just turn that right up. Awesome, all right. Now, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna create a ground plane. I'm gonna go shift A mesh plane and I'm gonna scale that up quite a lot. And I'll bring it down. Like so. And um, let's go ahead and switch over to rendered view. So I'm going to turn on rendered view and I'm going to go to my world tab and I want to change my world color from gray to black. It's going to make this thing a black environment. Um, and I'm going to untick uh, lock camera to view so I can zoom in and make my view a little bit bigger. And then I'll lock it back again. Actually, I'll keep it unlocked for now just to be safe. I don't want to mess it up. Now I'm going to click on our wavy object and I'll just turn on our widgets again so we can see it. So I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna come down to the material tab, click new, and right here where it says surface principle BSDF, I'm gonna change this to an emission shader. I'll just go to the shader editor so you can see this in practice as well. This is a great little uh, trick. There's two ways of doing it. I can come over here and go shift A, and I could search for the emission shader. It's also, you can see it lives under shaders. These are all the different shaders. And then I could just unplug this and then plug this one in and bam, I've achieved what I was after. Um, another way is actually just changing the type of shader directly here under surface. This correlates to this material output node and the surface input. If I change it for principle BSDF, I can click this and I've got a bunch of different options. These are all the things that could possibly plugged into this uh, surface node. And I can come here and just click on emission. You can see it automatically just swapped out that first node from a principle, principle BSDF to the emission shader. And now we can turn this up. If it goes past one, we're going to get some bloom if we come over here and turn on bloom. And I'm going to turn on ambient occlusion and screen space reflections as well. I'm going to click on my ground plane, click new, and I'm going to turn metallic all the way up. And I'm going to turn my roughness way down so it's super shiny. And then we're going to click on the uh, wavy object. And I'm going to go back to the modifiers tab. And I want to add in another modifier. I'm going to add in the wireframe modifier. Now this modifier will take the mesh as it exists after all these modifiers have done stuff. These are all non-destructive. So that not, you know we can turn them off and get right back to our plane that we started with. Turn them all back on and there they are. And I'm going to take the thickness down on this wireframe modifier. So it's taking all that modified geometry and it's creating a visible version of the wireframe. So there it is. Now we can see the wireframe. Very cool. Now let's change the colors a little bit and I want to use something to drive these colors. I want it to be kind of like a rainbow of colors. And I'm actually using the texture coordinate node, which is a little bit of a, uh, a hack in a way, because the texture coordinate node outputs basically um, vectors or so a set of three numbers that represent the position of you know where to put a texture on a 3D surface. And 
um, I can actually use these numbers and say, don't think of these as numbers, Blender, think of these as color values. And so it'll look at the X, the Y, and the Z value, and instead of thinking positions in 3D space, it'll look at it as red, green, and blue. So you can see if you plug the generated in, you get this cool rainbow effect. And this is basically meaning that, hey, there's a little bit of red here, there's a little bit of blue to get this purple look. And so that means there's a bit of um, uh, X and Z, right, on this particular point on the you know, for the texture space. So that's where this is coming from. Um, I can plug all of these in and see they get different results. So the normal looks one way. The UV is going to have more of like orangey colors. It's going to go to black in one corner where the UV goes to zero, zero. Um, the object coordinate. Each one of these has a very different look and um, they're really fun to play with. Camera is actually based on the position of the camera. So this is quite an interesting one as well. You can get some cool effects. Same with window. It's based on where it is in the window if you were to flatten the space. Um, and the reflection as well has got a very cool kind of look to it. So I'm going to stick with generated. I like the way this looks. I think this is pretty cool. Um, I'm going to turn up my strength a little bit. I don't want it to get too hot. Um, and I'll just zoom out so I can see my whole camera. All right. Now, what I want to do next is I'm going to take my camera and I'm going to come down to the camera tab and I'm going to turn on depth of field. That's going to start giving me some shallow depth of field. So out of focus stuff. I'm going to open up this tab. And I'm going to take the f-stop all the way down to 1 or 0 0.1, 0 0.1. And then I'm going to push my focus around until I've got only holding down shift to slow down the values. I'm just going to get a nice little central cut through. So I'm in focus right in the middle there. And then I can hold down shift and slowly bring the f-stop up just to bring a bit more of it into focus. That's a really cool look. Now to really get nice depth of field, I'm going to come up to the, my render tab and I'm going to come to depth of field. And I'm going to turn on a uh, jitter camera and high quality slight defocus. These two settings will help to really refine the uh, depth of field. Now that I've got all this, I can play with the strength to adjust the size of these ripples. What I want to do is I want to have this thing actually rotating. I want to give it a perpetual rotation. So to do that, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to come to my rotate Z and I'm just going to click on this. I'm going to type in hashtag frame multiplied by 0.01. Now what this is going to do is hashtag is a uh, shorthand for adding a driver. So a driver is a way of adding a little bit of code to something to get it to move or connecting it to something else. So connecting to a value of another object in your scene. And the hashtag is just a shorthanded way to uh, create one of those. Frame is a built-in variable that Blender has in it that will always access the current frame. Uh, so the frame number itself. So think about it this way. As the frame number goes up, as you hit play, we're gonna take that number, we're gonna multiply it by 0.01 and we're gonna use that as the rotation on the Z. So if I hit return there, it's going to turn purple, which shows me that it's a driver. And if I hit play, I'm going to get this nice continual motion. It looks really cool. Now I might, uh, let's get some dynamic waves and undulation going with this. So if we come back over to our modifier tab. We're going to come to this texture um, on the displacement. I'm going to change the coordinate from local to object. I'm going to create an object. I'm going to come here and shift A, and create a plane access empty here. And I'm going to make this guy just move around. So I might just have it perpetually move up and I'll use the same trick. I'll go pound or hashtag frame multiplied by 0.01. Catch me saying pound there. Does that date me? I think it does. Um, all right. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to select that empty as the object. And what you'll notice is as it moves up, then the motion on this is going to continually change. It's pretty cool. All right, there you go. I hope you really enjoyed this and learned how you could stack up modifiers to create some really interesting motion graphics effects, really cool like holographic display effects, um, just using the built-in modifiers that you have in Blender. It's a really powerful system, so don't forget to dip into it. Also, this texture trick is really fun to play with, so I hope you have a good time with it. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to check out the full uncut version of this, along with all the other uncut versions of all my tutorials, you can head over to Patreon and join there at any level, or you can join on YouTube and get the same thing at the Alexis Pass level and higher. Likewise, if you want to get this project file, you can get all the project files each month as they roll out and they become available. And that's over on Patreon at the second tier and up. But get, get them where you can because each month they cycle out. Maybe there's new files. So uh, if you see one you like, jump on it the month the video comes out. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate you guys. And I will catch you in the next one. Until then, have a fantastic week. See ya. Yeah.